Hello, and welcome to the Garments of Freedom Bible Study. I am Kristen from Garments of Splendor, and I'm so glad that you are joining me on this journey of trading garments of shame for freedom in Christ. This is a five-day Bible study, and you will receive an email each day this week talking about the various topics in this Bible study of how we can trade garments of shame and have true freedom in Christ. So let's get started. Day one is shedding the shawl of shame. Try saying that really fast. We first have to start by asking ourselves, what is shame? A painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior, guilt or disgrace. This is just a quick Google search on the word shame. And this is what came up when I looked it up. No one wants to have feelings of humiliation or distress or because of the wrong that we've done or even wrong that has been done to us. Those are feelings that we don't want to have. And oftentimes we can walk around with those feelings of shame, guilt, and disgrace. Jessie Manassian is a blogger at lifeloveandgod.com, and she writes to teens and young women about how to find their true identity in Christ. And she was on a podcast, and I heard her share about her story and the experiences she had with sexual abuse as a child, and just the shame that she experienced from that. And she made a powerful statement that I had to stop what I was doing in the middle of the podcast and wrote it down. She said, shame becomes a cloak that you wear and it is so hard to break free. And that just describes it so powerfully that the shame we experience, whether it's because of a wrong that we have done or a wrong that has been done to us, it's almost like a, wearing a cloak that you just can't shake off. That heavy burden that we walk around with day in and day out. And it's so hard to break free from, but praise God that we can break free of that sin and of that shame that can just sometimes cripple us throughout our lives. Well, we first have to start with, once we understand the definition of shame, where does it come from? What is the root of shame? In Genesis 2.25, Adam and his wife were both naked and felt no shame. So when they were in the garden, when they were enjoying time with God, they were just enjoying the bliss of the garden and all of the wonderful things that they could do free of shame, free of sin, free of a life of worry or care. Enter the serpent. In Genesis 3, the serpent is described as more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And Satan came through a serpent and started talking to Eve about what God had told Adam and Eve. Did God really say that you are not to eat of this tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And he started planting those lies into her mind and into her heart telling her the lie that you will surely not die. Well, unfortunately, she started to believe him. The root of shame is sin. As the story unfolds, Genesis 3 reveals to us that when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Both of them deliberately disobeyed the command of the Lord. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So this is the first time that they realize that something isn't right they were naked and felt shame. They felt fear. They felt completely exposed and tried to hide themselves and hide the sin that they had done by sewing fig leaves together to cover themselves. So shame was revealed 
through sin. And of course, we know that there were consequences for those sins and death entered the world, sin entered the world, but God did not give up on his beautiful creation. God in his compassionate covering gave Adam and Eve their first set of clothing. They tried to cover themselves with leaves, which didn't work, but the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife, and he clothed them. And all throughout the rest of the Bible, you see powerful and beautiful examples of God clothing his people, of him covering their sin and their shame. Jesus took on the ultimate just depth of our sin and shame by dying on the cross. Hebrews 12, 2 says that fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So he, in his power and majesty, comes down, walks among the people of this earth and endures the most excruciating and shameful death imaginable. Dying on a cross was shameful. It was just so embarrassing. They were stripped of their clothing. They were beaten unrecognizably most times and nailed to a cross. And many commentators believe that Jesus may have been naked because he was stripped of his clothing. And they wanted to humiliate people as much as possible through those types of deaths. I know that many of you have heard the expression shame on you when we've done something wrong. Oh, maybe our mothers or our teachers may have said, shame on you for doing that or shame on you. But because of what Jesus has done, he was stripped of his dignity on the cross. And now he proclaims shame off you. We do not have to live with the heavy cloak of shame and sin carrying us or, or, or just weighing us down, but we can be uh, lifted up because the shame has been lifted from us. And Psalm 34 verse 5 says that those who look to him are radiant and their faces are never covered with shame. I just love that passage. So that concludes our study for today, just really digging into what is the root of shame, where does it come from, and how can we overcome it. So I'd like for you to end your email that you received a, a Bible study um, handout that you can download and print off, and it just asks you, in what ways has shame held you captive in your life? And there's a section where you can just write down some of those reflections, and and sometimes we can visit those troubling and difficult times in our lives and maybe from our childhoods. And, and that's a scary thing to go back into those hard times of our lives. But just pray and ask God to reveal those shameful areas in your life, whether it was something you've done or something that was done to you, and ask God to remove that heavy cloak of shame from your life. Tomorrow, we're going to talk more in depth with the garments that God has clothed us with and how we are adorned in his beauty, splendor, and we can put on garments of praise. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.